Welcome back to Race Day on Fox. I hope you're as pumped as I am. I got a great guest coming up here on the line, 877-99 on Fox. Real quick, I want to take some calls here real quick. Uh, I've had uh, guys on phone here, and I want to get to them. Carol's the only one there. Uh, and uh, we'll get to uh, Tony here in a second. Tony, hang on one second. I got to get some calls. Errol, welcome to Race Day on Fox Sports Radio. What's up, man? Hey, Ralph. How you doing, buddy? Doing well, man. What's on your mind today? Not a lot. I just got more of a comment first and a question. Go first comment is, where, where's the wedding? What wedding? Between Ray Hall and a monkey, man. Did he find something smaller <laughs> than him? Man, that's terrible, man. Hey, man, don't, don't, don't jump off the ship, man. You know, <laughs> stay with the whole there, team, Hey, man. the monkey's here, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> what else you got? I was wondering, man, what's Junior going to do after his contract expires? you think Henderson will keep him or put him to the curb or what? Because I... It's getting to the point now where you've got to accept as a mid-level driver, and you got to go with that, you know? Man, I just yeah. – I, I don't know, man. I don't know what's going on here. I don't consider him a mid-level driver. Yeah, a lot of people say, hey, he's not a great driver. What, what's the problem there? He can win. He can find victory lane. He has done it in the past. It's not just restrictor plate racing, even though, you know, you think of an Earnhardt, you think of DEI, uh, and that was their place to be back, back in the day. I'm not sure that's there, uh, what we think of him as anymore. Unfortunately, what we think of him now as a guy that can't find victory lane, a guy that is mid-pack, a guy that can't qualify well. We've seen some uh, hints of, uh, you know, where he could shine through, where the light shines through a little bit. But uh, after that, it uh, kind of fades away or something happens on the track. I will say this. Uh, I do uh, uh, hope that he gets back into his winning ways, gets a win under his belt. We were talking about it earlier. Two years ago, almost to the date here, where it was back at this track, Michigan, where he uh, got his last win. It was uh, June 15th, 2008. Uh, right now, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is 16th in points, 455 back out of the top spot, unfortunately for him. Uh, another guy that also his last race was here is Brian uh, Vickers at the track talking about his teammates on Twitter. I just saw him uh, uh, three hours uh, to the grid, and he was talking about where Scott Speed starts. And so this guy still, man, he, he must be killing him not to be in that car, man. Uh, that is one thing, you know, he made the announcement coming out that he is not going to be in the car for the rest of the year as he, uh, you know, gets better. We wish him the best. There's no doubt about that. Uh, but I do want to switch gears right now and uh, go to real quick. Let's go to Tony. Tony, welcome to Race Day on Fox Sports Radio. Oh, this is my guest, Tony. Tony, uh, you know, I'll, let me bring him on real quick because I want to tell a story first. Uh, Tony uh, Bufamante uh, in the Mustang Challenge. He's your points leader right now. He's won the last two races. He's just plain showing off right now. And I particularly, I don't really like that. You know, I don't like a show off coming out and, hey, sticking out his chest. Look at me. I'm a badass. No, I'm kidding, Tony. But we were joking uh, with uh, some of the guys because he races with Capaldi Racing. That's who I raced with when I went out to New Jersey. And, uh, you know, we were talking about uh, people in the trunk. They sent me a picture of, uh, you know, because I, I said on the air, you should check the trunk. Maybe there's something going on in there that you need to be looking for. And they sent me this picture. If you're watching the webcast, it's great stuff. They actually put somebody in the trunk while they're in victory lane. So some great stuff. There's Leo over there, his kids uh, in the background there. I actually don't know who's in the trunk, but we'll find out. Welcome to the program, uh, Tony Bufamante. Welcome to Race Day on Fox Sports Radio, man. Hey, forget about it. Forget uh, about it over there. Here. Glad uh, to be here, guys. I'll tell you, we, we love the show. We got uh, got a chance to listen to it after after the Lime Rock uh, victory. And anybody that uh, that makes fun of my Italian heritage and also uh, <laughs> calls our chief competitor the Red Baron in the first 10 seconds of a segment, that's got to be a good show in my book. You got that right. And I will say this, uh, you know, I put on uh, the, my blogs and stuff like that, D'Amico and Bufamani face off. It's time. But uh, you know what? Uh, you're doing a great job out there. You guys with Capaldi Racing and what, what you have going on. And, you know, I was talking to you off air a couple of days ago where we were talking about your history uh, in racing. You've been racing quite a long time. I mean, you have starting from karting, and, that, and that's important because uh, usually the kids start off karting, move their way up. You've also done boats, which I find amazing. So uh, talk about uh, your racing experience uh, over the last few years. Well, I'll tell you, you know, it started as a young kid. Uh, my dad was my Little League baseball coach, and uh, I, got hit in the, I got hit in the jaw with a pitch, and I said, this, this baseball is way too dangerous, so we got to try something else, and clearly, <laughs> well, that, clearly hey, auto racing. Real quick, Tony, that explains a lot now. Now I understand. Yeah. <laughs> it was the jaw. It wasn't the top of the head, oh, but, okay. uh, but anyway, uh, so clearly auto racing was the choice. Did a lot of karting for, for many years and kind of grew up through uh, you know, the sports car ranks, SCCA and so forth, and uh, did a lot of open wheel stuff. 
and then after a while, you know, we were fortunate enough to win some championships. And you know, as you know, this is this is a tough business from a financial standpoint, and couldn't get the uh, the IndyCar ride together that we were looking for. Came pretty close, but um, ended up you know, doing a little, taking a little bit of a different path. Went offshore racing with my dad in uh, in a 25 foot warlock, everywhere from the shores of Link, uh, St. Clair, Michigan, all the way to Key West. And what a blast that was! If you uh, you want to hear some real comedy? You, you got to listen to the uh, in headset radio between the two of us in an offshore boat and six foot waves. And see if that was my in, in in boat radio, in car radio, or in headset. There, you'd hear me screaming and crying a little bit, man. I I don't I don't understand that boat racing stuff, man. That just seems so that you're skimming across the water and a little tiny mistake and it's done. You're you're flying through the air, flipping. You're uh, it's amazing to watch those things. Yeah, it was uh, it, it was a lot of fun. It was it was certainly different for us. We we, we went into it thinking uh, with the amount of racing experience that my dad has and I have combined that we were going to clean house, and uh, we certainly <laughs> got humbled the first year uh, before we uh, before we got in sync. But uh, well, talk, hey, but real quick, talk about your dad real quick because uh, I know he's still involved with some uh, karting stuff, and uh, that, that's important uh, as a family coming up through and racing and uh, to keep uh, going back to karting. Because I did it uh, totally backwards. I uh, you know went in the heavy stock cars. Uh, and then I'm karting. Uh, so I, I don't do things the right way, but I have a lot of fun doing it. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> that's one thing I can tell you about my dad is he does things the right way. I mean, he's been involved in, in karting for over 40 years now, everything from driving to, uh, you know, the part of the World Karting Association. And, you know, and I grew up uh, around the track and finally able to, to shoulder him out of the way and let me drive while uh, he could take the sidelines. And, you know, so it's been great to have him alongside all the way. And, um, you know, one of the proudest moments that we had as a as a family in racing last year was when he got inducted to the World Karting Association Hall of Fame after uh, 40 years. So we're, we're pretty proud of that. And there's, there's no better guy to have on the radio with you managing a race when uh, when things get a little hot and heavy. He's just got tons of experience, and, um, and he's great to have around. We'll talk about uh, last couple weeks in Victory Lane, back-to-back wins. Uh, That's got to be pretty neat. In your book, uh, Capaldi Racing, I know they do a hell of a job out there, and they're such professionals. They really do. But it's all about having a good time because when I went there, I'm a nobody. I went out there as as green as you could possibly be. Uh, I had four races under my belt. I literally go in. It's my first professional race. I don't know what the hell I'm doing out there. Uh, It rains. I never raced in the rain. So as you can imagine, Leo said, sitting there going, well, well, this car, I can write this one off. This one's going to be coming back on a a flatbed. Uh, But you know what? It didn't. I kept it clean. He was worried I was going to blow the engine in that thing, but uh, it did not happen that way. Uh, But I got to tell you, throughout the whole process, had fun. We were joking, laughing. You know, it was like being a part of a family in the Mustang Challenge. It's really cool. Yeah, and that that was a big part of our decision to team up with Capaldi Racing. I mean, we've had our own deal going together here for a few years with my dad and Mike Stahl and another individual, Pete Lip, who happens to be the stiff in the trunk at uh, Watkins Glen Victory Lane. <laughs> is that who that is? <laughs> it's that owner of MXK Racing, the uh, the carts that I race as well. But, uh, you know, and we, we were fortunate enough to win a couple races last year, and, and we knew that if we were going to you know, step up our game and try to go for a full-season championship, we needed to kind of combine forces and, you know, with everything that they do and the knowledge that they have from all the Ford racing parts and everything that uh, all the testing and things, uh, the engineering, and it just, it's amazing uh, resources for us to have at our disposal. And as you mentioned, you know, the fun factor is still there. I mean, obviously, it's a family business at Capaldi Racing. Uh, it's sort of been an extended, uh, you know, family, if I can call it that, for us. And you know, the only, it's the only the fear family. we have is, are the guys going to be, uh, are the guys going to be awake in the morning? That's the only, uh, that's the only issue I have when we're at the track. <laughs> Why? Because they're out partying the night before. <laughs> uh, allegedly, yeah. allegedly, yeah. we did. Uh, I was in the drivers' meeting a couple races ago. One of our competitors came up to me and says, "How are you doing today?" And I said, oh, "We're <laughs> we're a little tired." And he goes, "You guys are getting a hell of a reputation around here, but." As you said at the start, if we keep winning races, uh, we're going to keep on doing what we're doing. It is. I got a picture up of uh, you guys in Victory Lane. It is a Montley crew. I will say that. There's no doubt. Uh, but I, I will say, uh, you know what? Uh, can you stick around? I want to bring you back on. I want to talk some more racing with you outside of the uh, uh, Ford Racing Mustang Challenge and, and talk some NASCAR and, uh, and other forms of racing as well. Can you stick around? 
Absolutely. All right. We'll have more with Tony uh, Bufamane coming up on the program. Forget about it over there. I'll stick you in the trunk if uh, you, don't, you know what I mean. All right. Uh, and plus, we'll take more calls. Uh, the phone lines are open, 877-99 on Fox. We're having some fun today, talking some racing, Michigan, the Cup. Uh, we also have the Canadian GP with F1. I'm excited about that. And NHRA coming up right here on Race Day on Fox Sports Radio. Love. 